by Miss Liberty. Uh, well, I, I'm in the center. I'm a corporal in the Co F Company 115th Engineers at Camp Kearney. And on the extreme left, the fellow's name is Joe Wallace. And then there was uh, Mike McCullough was second. And uh, let's see. Uh, if you don't remember them all, it's not, it doesn't matter. Where are you? I'm in the center there. The one standing up the front slightly. Center yeah. one. That that one there. That's you? And on the end was oh, Joe, Joe Wallace and Mike McCullough and uh, Andy Devine. And uh, let's see. Now on the other three was, uh, oh, I forget. Oh, that's not important. Anyway, now, where was this? one was a Swede on the end. I, I forget his name. But, but they were a tough bunch, including me. <laughs> where was it? Okay. It was at Camp Curry, California. Oh, okay, this is before you leave. Then. That's before I left. Uh, wait, the number one side says my squad at Pont Is this in France already? Yeah. Uh, no, no, this isn't at Pont Amosson yet. That's a gang at Camp Kearney before they left. And that, that's... Northern France? That, that's northern France, n near where the Aragon Forest was. It was on the way up to the Aragon. He has some spectacular pictures of the, of the forest. Now this is our, our bunch uh, arrested by the side of the road. And that one on the uh, right is Captain Hurd. The one on the left was a Russian officer that trained us, Captain Grunsky, his name was. And uh, I'm in there someplace here. <laughs> uh, standing on the side of the road there. Now, was this after you had fought someplace? Well, I think I was taking a picture probably. That's what ah. I was. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's were, that. Were you getting ready for a uh, battle? Or? Well, we were going up oh. to the front line then. So this is before We're on the way up there. Okay. Yeah, see our guns all on the... You were the, you were the official uh, photographer for the engineers? I was assistant photographer. I had a, I had another fellow, uh, Frank Kohler, was, was with me. His, uh, his Fay on Hay, a little town uh, that got all blown up, and see where the, the barracks were, the uh, rocks were clean across the road, but they... They, they took them away, and I got this picture after the war. And yeah, what year was this? This was, I took some of these in 1919, and some before the war. I, I, before this before this was back. after the war. What did you do, go back and take pictures? Before the army. Well, I, I took pictures before and after. So you arrived in France in 1918? I, 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 I arrived in, in France in about March 1918. But the before war, that, I was the in the training camps, and uh, right. The war had started in 1914, but the Americans didn't get involved until 1917. No. And most of the Americans that fought didn't get involved until 1918. Yeah, the that, that, that's uh, when, when the war in 1918. That's our billet. We we took an old French house and made the headquarters there, and uh, the the fellow leaning against the post, his name was uh, uh, Hall. Uh, I forget his first name, but his last name was Hall. And Lafargy was the second one. Have you ever seen any and, of these? And Lord Phelps was the third, and the fourth one was, uh, 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 let's see. Uh, oh, Howard Fitch was the, f was the one on this end. Okay. Howard Fitch's dad owned the Eureka mine in, in Utah. It was a gold mine. Have you ever and, seen these guys since? Uh, well, no. Uh, uh, I try to get a hold of some of these fellas, and they they no answer. I guess they're all dead. Uh, I'm, <laughs> uh, well, listen, I, I'm about the only guy left, and I have a whole damn bunch. That's a promising outlook. Well, I went to a First World War, war reunion the other day in San Francisco at Stonestown, and they had. Uh, they had nine fellas left out of 250, and, and uh, you see, I, I didn't belong to this outfit. That was a 
322nd Field Signal Battalion, but I was with the 115th Engineers, so I was a guest there. In fact, Fred Mangelsdorf, the fellow that gave this lecture uh, and, and, the, and the party, he invited me to it, and uh, I met him when I was in Koblenz, because he went to Lick School, and I did too, so that's how I knew Fred. But uh, anyway, he lives up in Sonoma now, uh, up at uh, Timuskel Place in, in the town near Sonoma. Anyway, that's a rolling kitchen up on the front line, and, 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 and I can tell you a story about that. Okay, the, uh, tell us. The, uh, <laughs> When we first got in there, we, we were behind a little ridge, and we thought there was smoke, so much smoke and stuff that we built a fire in the kitchen, and the smoke went straight up. Well, the Germans had a shell in that that killed our mess sergeant and three or four guys that were standing around. But this is another one I took, this, this is a good one that came up there. See, it's on wheels, and it was brought up by horses. We didn't have any motor rice. Uh, very, very few automobiles were there then. But but uh, we brought horses over with our outfit. What did you eat when you were over there? Yeah. What? what was the menu? Oh, the menu was uh, uh, canned willy and hardtack. Canned <laughs> willy, <laughs> canned willy, we called it. That was uh, uh, corn Libby's corned beef. Yeah. And the hardtack was a dog biscuit about four <laughs> inches square and, and five inches of an inch thick. And, it, and, and believe me, when you yeah. cook that over a fire, it tasted like a donut, but it wasn't. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, we, 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 uh, after they... Uh, happened 60 years ago, 60 years ago from tonight. Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean November 11th, 1918? That's when the armistice was signed. Well, whatever. Now, I, was in, I was in the Argonne Forest. We were all ready for a drive on Metz. And uh, Metz was a fortified city. They had a moat around it with water in it, and, and it was an old castle is what it was. It was this time. And, and, and we, we didn't have to uh, fight in, into Metz because I'd have been killed, I guess, because we had to go out over a field to get in there. And uh, and some of the fellas went, and they got shot. But but I, I was held back by some god or somebody, I don't know. But anyway, I'm here. You talked about uh, huh? another time that a lot of your company was killed? Yes. Uh, we lost a third of our company up in the Oregon of different uh, engagements we had. And one place, uh, they had guns uh, mounted for a half a mile, and the end of the gun was just melted off from, from firing so much. And uh, I, I brought home a French 75. I don't know whether you ever saw that. But anyway, I, I brought home some a shell from five different nations. I got those home. And another Austrian 88 shell, which is about... Uh, uh, four inches high and about an inch and a half uh, in diameter. I still got that with the shell. But well, I'll show it to you sometime. Where's Grandpa? Which one? The third oh. one from the left. The tall one with the mustache. Oh, with the mustache. Right. 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 The second one from the right. right. Doesn't look like you. <laughs> well, it, I was different in those days. <laughs> This is a supper wagon again. This is on the front line. <laughs> How old were you there? I was about 25. See, there's another house that... Uh, see that ladder behind the opening? Well, the Frenchman used to go up in that ladder and get, get the range of the artillery. Well, a German plane saw them, and when we came back, we couldn't find the town. They just leveled it. They, they cleaned off everything. But that, that, that's what one uh, shot of the road there. And we repaired those roads uh, behind the line most of the time. I was only in the trenches one, one, one day, that's all. But the rest of the time I was under shell fire because we worked behind the line and it was just as dangerous. And I was gassed twice up on the Vilsi front. I, I was 
tested for gas and I got too much and I had, they sent me back to a rest camp. And I, then I, they worked a pie out of me in this rest camp, so I asked to go back to the front line. <laughs> uh, no, because it was easier up there. <laughs> well, and, anyway, the second time I got a real gas, and they had three kinds of gas. They had a lacrimatoria gas, that made tears come to your eyes. They had phosgene gas, that had burned the, burn the soles off your shoes. And then they had chlorine gas, which was deadly poisonous. And uh, I got the lacrimatoria gas. It, it made my eyes water, so I could get a good shot, see. But, but I shot at planes. I shot at everything up there. I hope I missed them, but I, I don't think so. <laughs> this town was uh, Bell Hay or something like that, a town of 100,000. This is what was left. Yeah. Well, there's that French water cart uh, up on the front, and you can see where the shell demolished the house uh, across the street from that. And they left that there, that French water can. They brought fresh water up in the barrel. See the barrel on the, on the, uh, on the uh, cart or whatever it was. And this is the French uh, dugout on the front. Uh, that was on, n near uh, Verdun. And uh, the French had a, a dugout and they had a hole. See where that little ladder is to the left? Well, there's a hole going down in there and it's way down underneath. And gee, they had a piano in there, and they had uh, they had all kinds of stuff, and, and a, a little kitchen and everything else. And I, I I went in that after the armistice was signed, but I did go in the trenches when they were fighting, and uh, just one day I was in there. But uh, uh, the Germans uh, dug so close to the French. It was just like as across this room, the two trenches, and they talked back and forth, and, and the French knew when the Germans were coming over the top, and, and the Germans knew when the French were. So they were stalemated there. They never moved for six or eight months, but when the Americans got up there, they didn't want to stop. They just put a little mound over their head, just enough to keep them alive and got in shell holes, and and they rooted the Germans out of there. But they had a hell of a time. We lost a lot of men getting them out. But I was one of the lucky ones. I never got any lead, but I was covered full of mud with flying rocks. I, I thought, sure, sure I was hit, but I, I was just uh, scratched up a little bit. And, but uh, I didn't get any lead. I was lucky. But a lot of our guys took a lot of lead, and, and you know they couldn't save in those days. They didn't have the facilities they have now for a war. They didn't have the drugs or the medicine or, or the method of taking a bullet out. In those days, if you had a bullet in you, it stayed in. But if it went clean through you, sometimes you could live. I saw a guy with a bullet clean through him, and he, he lived all right. I read of one man who was shot. But I, after I got through with the damn war, I didn't want any more. No kidding, I didn't. Well, let's see now. These next three kind of go together. Oh, well, yeah, this... Uh, it's a road that was built by that, the 150... Yeah, we, we, we repaired that road, and, and that's the one that Germans uh, okay. blew the hell out of it, and we, we took dirt from the side of the road and filled up the holes. Is that on? Did you turn it on? No, I thought I did. Oh, good. Okay. okay. So Lay back. Now. Yeah, hold it. No, just turn hold it. it up toward your, your uh, oh. fire truck. That's, that's okay. Don't hold your hand over it, honey. It's, well, we have two of them. Yeah, it's going. You, you can see the trees all blown to pieces up above there. They thinned out a forest. That was a, a heavy forest, and, and there was nothing left in there. <laughs> Yeah, this one Here's another picture of it. There are three of them. Yeah. The same Where was this road going to? Well, that was uh, between Fay and Hay and Vandiers, I, I think it was.
the two little towns, Fair and Hay was a town, and Van de Es was a little village is what they were. See, we, we dug all that on the side there where it's dug down. We did it with pick and shovel. There was no bulldozers those days, nothing like that. But, yes. but our whole, we had two, three hundred uh, fellas digging the, this thing. What was the purpose of blowing it out in the first place? Well, the Germans blew it out to stop us coming up. And then we repaired the roads and, and did what we could. You can see the mud there and everything. Oh, it was a hell of a job. Did you, were they building it as they were coming up? Well, they, they the knew we leave? were coming, sure. They, they were way ahead of us. Uh -huh. a another thing I did, I, uh, I gave the wrench to the uh, French artillery. Uh, I take and shoot a, I had what they called a nowadays. That was a, a little sketching board with a pace. And then I had, see, I, I, my stride was about three feet. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd pace, say, a half a mile, and I'd have another fellow help me, and we'd get w one angle to the, say, to that church ahead of us there, and then a, then pace a half a mile and take the other angle, and the, and uh, we, we knew the length between where we paced, and then we get two angles on the side that would give us the range by trigonometry, see? And then, th then they'd shoot one uh, bullet over the top, one underneath, and the middle wouldn't go right in the target. Uh, somewhere near the target, of course. But those shells we had, it didn't have to hit exactly. They'd hit somewhere within 20 feet, and they'd they demolish the whole thing. Your notes here mention the town of Vilsa. Uh, what? Vilsa. 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 Yeah. Oh, this is a, a this is a machine gun nest of the Germans had. They had a see that house there. They had a V-shaped blockhouse with slits in it, and they oh you can see the slits there. See them oh, to the left there, straight straight ahead. Well, well, they shot out. They shot a, a, a machine gun out of those uh, holes there, and when when we came up, we had to get behind anything we could get. The holes in the house there, with the windows up. Th those were were there, I guess, but they used them to shoot out of. They were windows, I suppose. Na narrow windows. So his his. Uh, his captain heard to the right and Captain Gwinski, and that's part of the trench system. You can see the trench, and that's part of the Aragon forest did up you, above. Did you fight with Russians? With Russians well, no, the Russians were our friends then, and they right. advised us what to do. But, but were, there, were there Russian troops fighting with you, or just... Oh, no, there were no Russian troops, and no, no blacks were there at all. And was that forest wiped out by your shelling, or...? Yeah, that was all wiped. That was a force. It was wiped out by the German and the Fr American shells. Both, both sides shelled it. Yeah, both sides shelled it. Yeah, no kidding. Were there but any? That, that was part of our trench there. That, that was near Verdun where that was taken. I was in Verdun, and uh, they, the, the Americans had an underground, the, I mean the French had uh, underground tunnels in Verdun, and that's the only thing that saved the town because I didn't get a picture of the town itself, but they leveled the town, the Germans did. They were around three sides of that, and the Americans came in the other side and, and held them off with the French. If it wasn't for the Americans, the Frenchmen couldn't hold it, and they, they were figure on retreating when we got up there. Is that an outfit? Uh, uh, is Verdun is Alsace Lorraine? Yes, yes, it is. I thought it was yeah, north. No, Up near Nancy, right? It's above Nancy, east of Nancy. All right. I was in Nancy, and they bombed a railway station in Nancy when I was there. You said there were no blacks in the war. Uh, no, well, they were blacks uh, to take care of the supplies only, but they didn't fight. Well, they, they weren't allowed to fight. They're not those days, no. Do you know what the reason for that was? Yes, they were yeah, they were yellow. <laughs> well, that, that, they were yellow. That, that's what they were. <laughs>
Oh, well. You said they were yellow? No. Well, they, they said they didn't have guts enough you know, to fight. They, they didn't know like they were they, they didn't have the guts to fight, that's all. But n n now it's different. They, they're all black well, that, fighting. Wasn't that really true, though? What? Well, I don't see how that could, could hold. Whoa. That if they constricted well, you, why well, wouldn't they constrict Chris, Chris let, let's, let's go on. Yeah, yeah, we'll go on and we'll yeah. continue this a little later. <laughs> yeah, this could last for hours. That, that's a barbed wire entanglement on the Moselle, I think it is, if I remember. We lived in some of those French houses. We built it in there, and they had beds made and everything else. But all the windows were shot out, so we used our shelter half to put over the window to keep the cold out. Shelter half? Yeah, well, you know, the shelter half was the uh, a piece of canvas that we wrapped our blankets in, and we carried a 90-pound pack on our back and two rounds of ammunition and a belt besides. I had a 45 and I had a Springfield rifle, and uh, sometimes I used the Lee Enfield rifle. That was an English rifle, re reward for American ammunition. Uh, I got some of those shells home. I'll show them to you and when you, on a good day when you walking, come over. How many miles would you cover with a 90-pound oh, When I marched from uh, Arlon and in uh, in uh, Arlon, uh, where what uh, uh, No, it's in Belgium. Our land's a town in Belgium. I walked from our land in Belgium through Switzerland, through France, into Germany, up to Koblenz. We marched every inch of the way. It took, us, way. took us three weeks. And uh, I, I marched Luxembourg, it. right? Not, not Switzerland. What? Luxembourg. So we, went through, we went through uh, Luxembourg. Not from our home. Luxembourg. That's the trip that I took. Yeah. Yeah, he, he followed my route through there. Did you? Yeah. Took you about three weeks, didn't it? Right. Did you walk it? I walked every, I walked every inch of the way. I had a short time, and my, my feet blistered very quickly, and, and then I had to say the rest. Hey, you know these darn officers. These officers rode in, a, in, a, in an automobile. But you know something? They, they had no tires. Uh, the officers didn't have any tires. They had a steel band around the rim where the tire goes. They had springs between the main rim and the and the hub. So so you see, it was rough riding. Oh boy! And over those rough roads, sometimes the wheel would come off and the whole works would go. And we'd have to jack it up and put a new wheel on. <laughs> Daddy, mom has a question for you. Yes. I wanted to know how. Oh, uh, average 10 or 12 miles a day, uh, maybe 15 if we were pushed real hard. But 15 miles with a 90-pound pack is something if you want to try it. Oh, it's like carrying an anvil on your back. <laughs> One mile with a 90-pound pack would be enough. Anyway, that was that. Uh, and that's what, what they did. They took out reinforcing rods and... and Put a bolt in the center and wrap barbed wire around it. To well, what was the purpose of that? Well, they, they'd roll it in the road so we'd stop us from go, going after them. The oh, Germans. Yeah, it's the bear. And then they'd, they'd drive a, a stake down, a, a, a metal stake, and, and, and put a chain around it. So it'd take, see, it'd take time to, to move that well, how out. How much time do you think it took them to put it together and put it in the ground? Oh, oh, they had them put together in the back and then brought them up on the Oh, so the as wagon. they were moving, they would do it? Yes. Uh -huh. Here's some dugouts that I stayed in uh, behind, a, behind a German line. The Germans were on the other side of that hill there. You notice how they, they uh, built them around the trees so that they'd camouflage them? They built those uh, dugouts, the trees. There's an old French bicycle. You have here headquarters of uh, Purnell Woods? Purnell. Oh, Purnell Wood. Purnell. Yeah. Purnell. Purnell. Okay. Wood. Where is that then? Well, that's on the east end of the Oregon Forest. Here's the entrance to one of the dugouts. 
they, they put a board over it. See, see the kind of a door on there? Well, that's the, that's where we went down underneath. And then the sandbags there in the top, can you see them? Yeah. That's part of the, uh, oh, that's a German graveyard underwater. The, uh, it rained like the Dickens over there, and <laughs> and it, it flooded the grave. Sometimes the body had flowed up the top. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, a line the, there's a line in the middle there. Is that, it looks like it's trying, there's some kind of barricade in the water. Yeah, see, see that looks like a head there, uh, right, right over to the right a little bit, head sticking out. I saw a lot of dead Germans. In fact, I took some, I took a helmet off of one, sent it home to my nephew, Don White, and uh, he and Bruz used to dig, dig, uh, put a mound of dirt and throw sides at each other. They were little kids at that time. And, but, but Bruz and Don were in the Second World War. They, uh, 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 Bruz was a lieutenant commander and he, He's one of, that uh, rode a PT boat in, into Japan one time, and so he had lots of nerve, more than I did. Let's go over here. Let's see, I, I don't know that there one. There are portable houses erected by 115th Division. Oh yeah, that, oh, that's the portable houses. We, we filled them up there with anything we could get and put them together there. We did a lot of uh, building too. Is that snow on the ground? Yeah, snow. Oh, there's our outfit with the horses, see? And that's some of the guys that uh, were in my company. I think the fellow on the left was Joe Wallace again, and, yeah, and McMillan was the third guy. Were any of those men killed in the war? Uh, no, I don't think so. See, they stayed behind the lines. They had mules. See the mules in the back? That's the mules. They aren't horses. And there's some wash hanging out. That might have been mine. <laughs> that's another little house we had for barracks behind the line. But that was after the armistice I got that picture. See, it rained like the Dickens and snowed, too. What's called is the Dickens there. Did you walk through the snow? Oh, sure. We had big heavy boots on and was and, and, and olive drab uh, and wrapped leggings we had. I slept in the snow one night. You did? Oh, that, well, that's, that's something. That's unusual for you. <laughs> no, it isn't. Uh, did you sleep in the snow? When sure you? did, with yeah. my clothes on. I never took my clothes off for a month when we were going up the line. <laughs> And when I wouldn't I, have either. <laughs> hey, when I came to the Shaw River, I'll, I'll tell you, good. When we came to the Shaw River, maybe if you look close, you'll see the church there with the hole in the steeple. When uh, that one go off? Uh, Matt, a, there was a hole in that church steeple, and and the shell went clean through it. Did you see? See where it's busted? And, yeah. You know, the Germans took most of the roofs off those houses because they, they, uh, they had steel uh, girders across. And they took them and, and put them in the trenches. So that's why some of those uh, buildings didn't have a roof on them because they took them all off. They, they did everything. They even made iron money. I had some iron money, but I, I can't find it now, but I brought home some from the war. Now, this, is, this is the city of Tula before the bombardment, so uh, it was later bombarded? Well, no, they took those off before the war was ended. Right, uh, but this city was later bombarded? Well, yeah, yeah it, was, it was bombarded, all right. I couldn't say that. Maybe that house lost its uh, roof, but I, I don't think no, so. No, this, this, your notes say that this is before it was bombed. Oh, yeah, before it was bombed, I guess. Now that, that's some more barracks that we built, put up there, our outfit. And we had two or three companies help, help build those things. There you go, Matt. Take one. There's, there's a Frenchman with uh, three bullets. There's one... Uh, 100 kilo, kilograms, uh, 
50 kilograms and, 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 and 15, the little one to the left of us. 100 kilograms would be like 260 pounds. Yeah. What are they taking, the shells? Yeah, yeah, those are the, some of the shells. I, I lined up a Frenchman uh, against him, and uh, I forget what his name is, but he was a French officer. But I lined them up, and we, we put those shells up on end, and, and I took the picture. So you got it in backwards then. Yeah. You want to read it? Okay, we'll turn it back. There's a house cut in half on the Vilsey front. Okay, let's take a look at this again. So yeah, yeah, do. that's right yeah. now. Uh, See, 100 kilograms, uh, 50 and, and uh, 12. Uh, the little one is 12. Uh, uh, Alamand is a German. Something Yeah, Alamand, that's a German. Now, what does it mean? Uh, torpedoes, uh, torpedoes uh, shot out by German planes. Yeah. Wow, very good, Mark. Dutch, huh? You got it, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't go off. That's, you know, <laughs> I had a job removing the percussion cap off of some of those shells with. I only, I only was on that a couple of weeks, and I asked for a transfer, but, <laughs> but you know you know what they'd do? They'd fuse them all up and then take one of these uh, detonators and, and, and get them in a ravine and then and push down on the thing, and they'd blow the whole bunch all up. Bombs, yeah. And then you'd pick your way through to see the ones that went off, and some of them the percussion cap was bent in, and it would only take a split second for that to go off. So I stayed all away from it. And we marked the, that with a, a red mark, the ones. And then, the, then we had a, a demolition crew that came in and, 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 and took the percussion cap out, out of those shells. Did they have a lot of bombs? We, had a, we had a couple of guys killed doing that, taking yeah, the thing sides. off. Both sides? Both sides did it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a square. Uh, this time it's a good slab, yeah, so it's a good that, that's a square in the, uh, you know, Latin, right? That's a square, and, and you know what they call a grocery store in France, a pissery. A pissery? A pissery. Yeah, a pissery. Speaking of pissery. Oh, pissery. <laughs> hey, you're getting. <laughs> hey, see the tobacco store? That T A B A B A C tobacco. That's a tobacco store. What is That that was the courthouse. The one, the courthouse was the one on the right there. And Nancy, I think it was. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I was going to say that there was there was a, a pissery if you want in Belgium oh. in the middle of a park. You yeah, come what? up to it there, and it was a urinal. Yeah. And you go up to one side and then somebody else would come up to the other side and you could look at each other while you were. Well, urinating. sure. They just put a, they just put a piece of tin in front. I was little thing today. They put a piece of tin in front and it, and they could and the ladies would look over the top. But this was in the this was in the middle of the park. Well, I know. <laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> I think they've taken most of them off because that was the only one that was left in in the vein. That's a streetcar, Nancy. It's backwards. That's all right. No, that's not backward. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, the streets. The uh, the words are backwards. Oh, oh, can the words are backwards. I, uh, I can't read backwards. No, I mean, can you read it? Was it? Uh, that's it. Yeah. Even I can read that. I think they've changed the streetcars now. <laughs> hey, you could write. You could write in a streetcar in France for for a, for a couple of pennies. You could write in those days. Uh, there were well, ten pennies to a to a. No, no, France? twenty. Yeah. A franc was twenty I mean, cents. Pennings are in uh, Germany. Cable cars? No, not Germany, Holland. Yeah, oh, all the cities yeah. had those. Those are street cars. Yeah, those are street oh, yeah? cars. We, we, we rode on street cars. When we that, that's another picture of. Uh, that looks like Nicaragua present. <laughs> 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 I, uh, that's a, 
That's the street of something. Street de Jean, is it? Yeah. Rue mm -hmm. de Jean. Street de Jean. Rue de Jean. Oh, oh, view, 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 the view of the terrace, the la rue Benny, of the west street. That's the name of the street. No, again. Something, uh, near, near, near. par avion. By, by, by the German planes. German planes. Oh, that's both par avion, par avion, by a plane, which is, uh... Joan of Arc, Joan of Arc, it was. It's another, this another uh, French, a real nice French house that was bombed. Mm. Let's see, I don't know if I can get the words on that. We had a gun that would shoot 20 miles, and they shot it into Paris, and it hit, it got on the outskirts of Paris, but they couldn't pinpoint where it went. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it did demolish a few houses, but shot 20 miles. That was going some for those days. That was Big Bertha. Big Bertha, that's what, what they, that's I got the emplacement the way that, where that gun was, but they took the gun away before I, I could get a picture of the gun. That's another, that's Nancy. Where is Nancy? Nancy is northern France. I'll show you on the map where it is, so if you come to my... A, a section of... Northern France. Yeah, I, I got no, a... Just one city, right. Okay. Yeah, it's a big city now. I got a picture of the... Uh, I got a map, and that... And the, that's, that, that's the uh, cathedral at Rheims, I think it is. And, oh, oh, Porta de l'Eglise Saint-Gougourde. That's the uh, face of the Saint... Church. No, that isn't Rhymes. That, but I did have. I was in the Rhymes Cathedral uh, when it was bombed. It says Rhymes before bombardment. When it was destroyed. Before bombardment. That was before the bombardment. But you know, the statues weren't even uh, demolished at all. They somehow or other they missed the statues that were inside. But the church itself was destroyed. Part of the church was destroyed, not all of it. That's the altar of one of them. It looks like it might have been afterwards, where that candle no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember really. Yeah, that's not that careful about candles. Uh, <laughs> is that getting hot now? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. Not too bad. Oh, and that's a, that's a church with the shell through the staple. Oh, we're the top. Yeah. Looks like I missed the rest. Yeah, the Americans attempted not to. And you it. see right right on the left where they thinned out the trees from the fire, from the shells. Were, uh, were the Americans careful, or did they try not to hit the churches? Well, they, they didn't bother with the churches. They wanted to get the Germans out of the trenches, and, mostly, and, and win which we did, but we, it was a tough job. There's the machine gun nest. See that V-shaped thing and, and, the, and the slits in the, that's a machine gun nest in an old French house. You can see all the dirt they dug out uh, uh, building that thing. They left it right on the side. See how the trees are all uh, thinned out and. That's another picture of a... I forget what that yeah. was. What's this one, Andy? Marks. And Chris says all the, all the French houses are old. This one here they are. They're the only ones that last. <laughs> you know, in those little villages, if they, all the roads were like the spokes of a wheel. They all congregated in a central point. And they still do. And they were, were narrow. You could shake hands across the street in some of them, you could. And you couldn't drive an automobile down them. You had to walk. Yeah. Yeah, but were you in some small villages? Oh, a lot of them. Yeah. Do they have any yards behind them? Did they what? Have yards behind the building? Oh. I don't remember. That's our balloon uh, uh, observation. And Doing you know, one time I saw, I, I saw them shot a balloon down. 
Like we took a we took a, a wrench no, on the no. on the Germans from the balloon, but they balloon? they didn't last very long what up there. What were those balloons made of? Well, they were made out of a uh, kind of a rubber, I guess. I mean, were they, they had helium in them and everything? Oh, no. I don't think they had hydrogen. helium. Hydrogen. They didn't oh, have. Yeah. Those things blow up, don't they? Yeah, they, yeah, they didn't have helium those days. They didn't blow up by themselves. <laughs> Nobody had to shoot. No, I think they just had ordinary gas in those. There was no helium those days. Yeah. He says it's a uh, French bear. There was no TNT either in those days. They, they, uh, they invented that later. That that's tri nitro, uh, tri nitro something. I don't think she understood, man. You better tell her again. TNT. Try nitro, turquoise, turquoise. You must say there's a French barricade, uh, that there's a yeah, camouflage road. Yes, yeah, see the yeah. camouflage road down there. What, what is it? I think, I think the Americans camouflaged that road. That, that was out in the open, if I remember. There's a there's a bridge we repaired Limp. over the Rhine River, Limp. and, and uh, Foch and Pershing uh, came up, and we were lined up on both sides when it was finished, and and General Pershing said we were the dirtiest looking outfit in the AEF, so the next day we all got new uniforms, but well, we had to tie our old uniform with our belt, and then throw it in a pile. And, and the, the clothes I got were somebody else's. They wouldn't fit me worth a darn. And so I had to have a French tailor uh, work on them. Uh, and those tailors worked for nothing, practically. Gee, for about two, three bucks, you could, you could get your clothes all fixed, made to order again. They, they'd take your clothes and, and cut parts off and refit them and do everything. Make them too small. And you know, you could get a, you could get a haircut for a, Fifty short times, that was ten cents in those days. Now, those Frenchmen cut your hair so fast. <laughs> Is it good? Uh, they wondered, wondered they didn't cut your head off. Well, that's because they weren't getting paid anything. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's the emplacement where that big gun was. Uh, and they took the gun away before, they, uh, before I got the picture. But that was Big Boyce's set right there. Right, uh, Right to the left of us there. What was the range of Big Boy? Oh, 20 miles, I think it was those days. That was a good long way for a gun was th that those it? days. Was Gee, now they got a missile to go 50 miles, maybe, you know. No, they have a missile to go 10 miles. Oh, that's the Frenchman coming back from the front line, and, and see they're standing over. I took that picture. Oh, the 40 and 8, those are 40 and 8 uh, boxes. Yeah, those are, those are the 40 and 8. What do you yeah. call 40 and 8? Well, 40, 40 men and 8 horses. They bring eight. They bring eight eight horses. For, for each for one of those cars. Yeah. The other people do. You're kidding. Well, and then wow. then they put forty of us soldiers in the and, and I rode for two days and a night in one of those. And Did you they know, forty forty uh, um, arms we call it for the men and uh, and current current chevaux. That means eight horses. See, chevaux is a horse. Oh, and, and, and forty armies and 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 eight chevaux, wheat chevaux they call it. Wheat chevaux. Wheat, wheat is eight. Wheat chevaux, eight horses and forty men. And they wouldn't clean the they wouldn't clean the cars out either. They wouldn't clean the cars. No, they never clean them out. What did you do if you had to go to the bathroom? Well, we'd all hold hold the hands on the front door. And uh, let go. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else could you do? <laughs> what if the train was coming the other way? <laughs> that, 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 that was it. That's how you get your butt wiped. Hey, that right? was your problem. <laughs> <laughs> that was their problem. <laughs> you remember France where the trains were only two inches apart? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I see some guy doing out. that, and here comes a train. <laughs> yeah, I stick my head out like this. So he says, "Watch out!" And I look like this, and I go, "Zoop!" <laughs> and I see the thing that says, "Do not stick head out a window." <laughs> <laughs> Say another thing about a French car. You know, they had a coupling that was like like this. See? Yeah. 
uh, and they had a change on the side. So anyway, when it hit too hard or they backed up too hard, the coupling come apart mm -hmm. and the engine would be a half a mile ahead <laughs> so they'd have to back up and hook on again. Yeah. And, that, and that, that happened. And then another thing, they had flat wheels on their on these 40 and 8s and they, every time the wheel had hit a flat spot you'd get a bump on it and you had 40 guys in there and you couldn't sit down you couldn't stand up and and it was hard you didn't sleep at all I, how long did you ride in those i rode for two days and a night uh, in one of those things sounds like being in the army was worse yeah we, we stopped a couple of times we stopped at dijon where they had to had a steam engine then, but and they they had to go to the water uh, tower, you know, and get get water because it evaporates. So so we they had an old steam engine and a wood burning engine at that. Hey, put it back on. Take a picture. So so they. Uh, yeah, that, that's another picture of. A, of yeah. I think that's a church. The other one, the last one. Yeah, that's the that's the forty and eight trains. See how high off the ground they were. They were quite quite high off the ground, and they had narrow gauge tracks. They were only three feet wide. Those tracks were. When the Americans came up there later on, they put a broad gauge in there. Uh, they had uh, standard tracks and, and American engines. And they had American trains after. We came home in an in American train when we came back. Gee, that, at that time, America had the trains, uh, you know. How did they get that over there? They oh, they them shipped there? them over on boats. Yeah. They got them over. A what? Where is this? What number is that in? Barbed wire entanglement at Joan of Arc statue in this. Oh, yeah. That, that statue uh, r r right straight ahead was Joan of Arc statue. But it doesn't say where. Well, it was the town of Joan of Arc. They had Do a. Remy? They had what? Do Remy? Yes. That's where she was born. Who? Joan of Arc. Yeah, I think that's where she was born, because they, they had to, to see that the statue of her up on the top of a, a building there. And there's some German dugouts near the May Bridge. There's some more uh, dugouts there. I think, is that a German one? I think so. Yes. Yeah, that's a German dugout behind the, behind the hill. And that's another one. Well, that's French. Might be a Frenchman. See, they, they they built around the trees so they camouflaged it, you see? Yeah. But there was so much fire and stuff that they burned all the trees up and just left the stalk, stalk there. I saw an exhibition of uh, World War II camouflage. And some oh, of did you? Incredible. Uh, yeah. You couldn't tell that it was Oh, no, it you, could, you couldn't sand tell. Or the or whatever. Really. What was the exhibition? There's uh, some more. On the Maginot Line? Yeah, that looks like They opened up one of the places on the Maginot Line. You know what the Maginot well, Line Well, the Maginot built? Line was built after the First right. World War. Right, the Maginot Line. The Maginot Line was built after uh, the First World War to protect France from, from Germany. From the Germans. Again. But what happened was, was the Germans just went around it. They went through Belgium. Well, Hitler's punch went around and came in through... Uh, through, through Belgium. So Belgium, Belgium had a lot of German jokes. It's like we have them Italians. Yeah, the Germans... I mean, the Belgians despised the Germans at that time. They, they had been invaded once oh, during did, World War I. Stepping yeah, the, the, the Germans were were in Belgium on the, the First World War. That's how I was there. Right, and and the, the uh, but the, the the French believed that that would never happen again because the yeah, Belgians they were, they, were they thought it was. And so they but the French the, made a big mistake. They should have had those guns swiveling so they could shoot the other way. But no. they they were all set to shoot one way. They, they've since abandoned the concept of fixed fortifications. Yes, they did. They, they abandoned that because they, they got smart, I guess. But anyway, it didn't. It didn't Gee, you know, that's all concrete that they built. 
in there and all the heavy, heavy concrete. And as I say, they used to steal off the top of the houses to reinforce there. And that's another entrance to a dugout. I think we stayed in that. I ran a portable generator inside that dugout to keep the uh, to keep it lit for the army. I ran a portable generator. It was about a 12 light generator. We had 14 lights on it and blow it blow kicked the circuit the fuse out. We didn't have circuit breakers those days. That's upside down. How many pounds is 200 kilometers? 200. I mean, no, kilograms. 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 Well, one kilogram is a thousand grams, and a gram is uh, the weight of a nickel. How much? <laughs> 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 a kilogram is per pound. <laughs> Boy, that's a kilogram. How much that? <laughs> 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 what do I do the way around? One kilogram is about two pounds. Hey, that's upside down. That was upside down. Everybody, stand on your head. Oh boy, that's guys straight. That's 2.2 uh, centimeters per inch. That's a, that's a German breastplate on the road. See, see that? That's a German breastplate. They they used a steel thing on, in front of them, and, and that was supposed to prevent them from getting a, a, a bullet. Well, well, the shock troops did. The ones that went went over first. It obviously Looks didn't. like that one didn't make it. Yeah. Like no, that one didn't make it. Right. Really? Well, we did that in the Korean War. Well, we didn't use a, a steel thing. We used a plastic. Uh, plastic or some kind of a deal to stop the bullet. Well, it, it would deflect yeah. the bullet, wouldn't it, or something? Yeah, no, it stopped some of them. some of them. Oh, this is a, a fruit tree that uh, the, the French had trained to grow straight out. Like the and and I, I took that Art picture on, on a wall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was a peach tree. You could reach up and get peaches, but, but there were none on them when I took it. Really? Well, that's why they grew their, their Yeah, they, they there, trained right? that to grow that way. That's why they have short space, small space. I have one that I did a little bit too. Oh, this is That's a oh. castle. Where is it, Dad? Oh, somewhere on the Moselle or the Rhine. Is it? Yeah. City of Luxembourg and old abandoned moat. Oh, yeah, that, that's Luxembourg. Luxembourg? No. I oh, passed that, it. That yeah, that yeah, yeah that's Luxembourg. City, yeah. Yeah. I was there. All the, the, really? the city. rivers and. Isn't that a country? Luxembourg is a country and it's also the capital of the country. Yes. That's, oh, that's one of the most beautiful capital parts. Capital of what, you say? Pardon? The capital of Luxembourg. Oh. Is Luxembourg. I, I was in the capital, of the, and the Duchess of Luxembourg wasn't home that day. But we visited the palace where she was. She was uh, that, that was her palace, in the center of the town. And they had a, a long bridge across. May, some, maybe one of them will show it. You have some spectacular but, uh, bridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the bridge. I went across that bridge. That and, was built by the Romans. Uh, and this is bridge? this is yeah. part of the Did castle. See this yeah, thing right in front here? That's part of the castle to the, the left. Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Yeah. I went across Next that bridge. It's still, still good, isn't yeah, it? It was built hundreds of years ago. I think it was built by the Romans. Built it by the Romans. Because of the aqueduct. Yeah. The Romans are the only ones that build aqueducts. There, there are several other really spectacular bridges in this city. There's, there, there's a modern one and then a couple I forget. And you can also tell Roman architects this by... Romans Luxembourg. never put any go design. Go to Luxembourg if you go back to your... The Romans... Luxembourg? Yeah. Yeah. The Romans never yeah, put any design on their, uh, on their architecture because they were more interested Practical. in the function of it than the architecture. Yes, I think so. Yeah. But, uh, Here's another one. Uh, that's, the, that's the countryside. That's... Oh, yeah, that's... that's it still looks like that, Grandfather. Oh, oh, that's that's the way they had grapes and tears on the side of the road. Is that a castle up there? Along the Moosel River. Yeah, yeah, the that's river. a castle. Moorish castle? Is that a Moorish castle? Uh, wait, let's see if you've had it. Along the Moosel River. That's on the Moosel, I have, guess. You have this beautiful uh, terracing of grapes, and it goes, oh. like, for 100 miles. You know, we used to say the Frenchmen had one leg shorter than the other because they'd walk along the, the little... Uh, uh, <laughs> What are you doing? You had to turn around. they had all up the hill, but they, they had well, grapes growing clean up the top of the hill. Wow. 
And one leg was shorter than the other, so they could stand up. <laughs> and when he turned around, he was well, in we big used trouble. to kid them about that, but of course they weren't. This is where the Lone River flows into the Rhine. Oh, what? The Lone River flows into the Rhine. Oh, yes, the Rhone, I guess. The Rhone, okay. Yeah, that's right. The Rhone. Town at Ober Landstein, or something like that. I can't read Ober, something. Ober. I can't read John. Could that be Lichtenstein? That was below Dusseldorf in Bonn. It was near near Dusseldorf. And then I went through the Straits of the Lorelei. Did you ever hear the legend of the Lorelei? No. Well, anyway, there there was some uh, there was an island in the center, and there were some beautiful maidens lived on that island. So the Frenchmen had come on their boats, and they'd uh, jump over jump over to get to the uh, beautiful maidens. Well. They were all perished because the Rhine River was swift at that point. And that's the legend of the Lorelei. Nobody ever made it, huh? They never made it, no. So what happened to the maidens? I don't know. They never they made, made it either. That looks like a painting there. Still there. Doesn't what? That look like a painting? It could be. Yeah, it looks like a painting. Well, that's the actual one I, know. One I took. I kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there were all kinds of castles on the Rhine. Uh, across from Koblenz, there was a castle of Aaron Breitenstein, and the Germans had, had brought their big guns up there pointing toward France. So after the armistice, we, we went across a Schiffelbrucker, that's a pontoon bridge across the Rhine, and the center one, center of the Schiffelbrucker, <laughs> That, oh, that's me getting the rub with the snow. And that's Marco Pavlovich and myself. We were we were in actual bed and we were just about ready to slide down the hill on the, on the toboggan. And then I skied on on Mercury Bar up there. That was an actual bed in the Swiss Alps. We had a, a, a two weeks vacation at the government's expense. And then I stayed in the Royal Hotel and it was something. That's me on skis. I just about ready to take the plunge. <laughs> See, I went down and I went in the snow pile. There were 10 minutes getting me up. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't keep my feet together. They spread out when I got down. <laughs> and that's uh, my friend Holland Fitch and myself there. I'm on. I'm the one on the left there. That's how it fits, a friend of mine. I guess you can tell us a little bit. That's on, on the bobsled. See, that was fun. You were going about 60 miles, 70 miles an hour down the hill. And that was fun. I, I stood on the to bargain all right. I didn't fall off, but it was lot. That's it, huh? That's the work. Yeah. 